Alright then gang, so now you're well on your way to becoming React Ninjas, I thought we'd take a sidestep and take on the beast that is Redux. So what is Redux exactly? Well, put simply, Redux is a central data store for all of our application data. And any component in our application can therefore access data from this central data store. And therefore, it makes state management very, very easy once you've got the hang of it in React applications. So imagine this scenario. This is a component structure of an application. And it might look like a complex structure, but this is really a simple application, just a few different components here. So imagine that we have a latest blogs component that wants to show the latest blogs, some data that we get from an external source. But on the home page in the sidebar, we also want to show some latest blogs as well. So we want to kind of share the data. We both need that data. The sidebar needs it and the latest blogs needs it. So I guess what we could do is in the blog component, we could reach out, grab some data from an external source, store it in the state of this component and pass it down as props. But what about the sidebar? Well, I guess we could do the same thing. We could reach out in the home page to go and get that data, store it on the state and pass it down as props. But we're duplicating our code here, so probably not the best method of doing this. Or we could come up with some kind of convoluted way to pass the data we get from here up and around into the sidebar. Again, very convoluted, not the best way of doing things. So enter onto the scene Redux, which is a central data store. And we can store all of our data that we need for the application that is going to be shared between components inside this thing right here, this central store of data. So if this blog component wants some data, the latest blogs, it can just reach out, listen to this and grab the data and pass it down into this component. If the sidebar wants to get the latest posts as well, it can just reach out to the Redux central store and grab that data. No convoluted method of passing data between different components around the whole application and we don't need to duplicate our code. So this is in a simplistic form, the problem that Redux tries to solve in an application. Now, if we wanted to change the data as well, we can do from these components, the sidebar could make a change to the data and therefore the updated data is going to be passed to the blog, etc. and update elsewhere in the application. That's all fine, but they can't just directly edit it. That would be kind of unsafe in your application and may result to unpredictable code. So there is a process when working with Redux. So let's just take a brief look at how it all fits together. So we define a central store with Redux, first of all, and that's where our data is going to be kept on that central state, if you like. Now, if in a component we want to access some of that data, the component subscribes to changes to that data and then Redux passes the component that data in the form of props to that component. So now we have access to that data. That was simple. Now, if we want to make a change, we don't just go up and say, OK, make a change, change this property to this. No. There's a process so that our application is predictable and we know how to make changes and the application understands the process behind it. And it's much easier to debug if there are errors. And the process is this. We first of all decide that we want to make a change. Then we dispatch an action. So actions describe the changes that we want to make. And an action might be something like add post to add a new item to the data, the posts data, right? So we dispatch that action and with that action, we can pass along an optional payload and a payload is any kind of data that we want to pass along with it. So in the case of adding a post, then we'd want to pass along that data, the new post with that dispatch, right? So we're dispatching an action which describes the change we're going to make and some extra data, the payload, which is the data we want to add. Now, once we've done that step, that action is passed to what is known as a reducer. So the reducer takes in the action. It looks at the type and says, OK, I know now this is an add post action. So therefore, what I'm going to do is take the data that you've given me. I'm going to go to the central data store, the state, and I'm going to update it from here. So the reducer is the thing that actually updates the data store and all the changes are going to be made from here not directly from components. We go through this little 
root first of all, through the reducer, and then change the data in the state. Now, this all might seem a little bit complex and over the top at first, especially for the kind of applications we're creating, but I promise you, once you've worked with Redux for an hour or two, and you get the hang of this process, then it is gonna make your applications much easier to manage, especially when they get bigger. So anyway, that's the theory behind Redux, why we'd use it, and how things are kind of working in the background. So I think the next step in the next video would be to understand the code to do all this kind of stuff. Now, I'm gonna start out in CodePen, not in our project, just to explain the basics of the code and how we set up a Redux store. Then what we'll do is transfer the idea and all that code into our application bit by bit, just so I'm not overwhelming you with loads of other code as well on the side. I think this would be the best way to learn what we need to going forward.